Welcome back. We're going to do Conlangs again today. This has become a bit of a, a bit of a thing now. So let's go. Quickly before we start, I've got to say thank you to uh, Luke or Muffin or Muffin or Luke, depending on if you're looking at his uh, Insta or Amino. Uh, drawing this great fan art for me. Thank you very much. That's that's really greatly appreciated. Uh, go check him out on his his Insta page and his handle here. Yeah. Thank you, thank you greatly for that. Now on with the uh, on with the episode. So last time I set you some homework. It was pretty simple, pretty fun, you know. Decide writing system, decide the medium and instrument, and then you can create the script. You know, pretty pretty good, pretty fun. Um, so what are we doing today? Right, I've got to ask a question. What does this, this, and this have in common? I'll let you think a bit, a bit more, give up yet, okay, these are all numeral systems, now if you want me to explain in detail about all of these, I'm going to, however if you want to skip all the math stuff, you can skip to the uh, timestamps that's in the bottom right hand corner hopefully if I edit this correctly, okay, if, you, if you're sticking around, cool, very nice. Um, took me a while to write all this. So let's start off with this one. We all recognize this. This is called decimal. And you probably heard that. You probably you might recognize the decimal point. Uh from that. It comes from the la it comes from the Latin decimus, which means tenth. So how does it work? You might be able to look at it and recognise the number instantly, which is the good thing about this system and uh, I guess you from growing up and living with this system. Uh however there is a more complicated side to it. And that's this. It's a table. You might recognise that. You probably did it when you were young, in a young school or whatever. Uh, and you probably split your numbers up into columns, such as tens, units, hundreds, and thousands, which is all good fun and games. But did you ever really understand it? Probably not. But like, there's a more complicated side to it. So, firstly, we'll do this. So you can see ten in there, that's the decimal, that will change depending on the number system you have which I will explain later and then to the power of which place it's in so 0 on the right will always give you 1, anything to the power of 0 is 1 you can check this yourself, I promise and then the next one is to the power of 1 which is just itself and so on and so forth, squared, cubed, you know, fourth and you just do that and that's what each of those equals uh, in its decimal form so let's put a number beneath it, shall we? Let's do that. So that's probably what you did first, or what you would have done in younger years when you were doing numbers. I know I did it, you might not have done it, I might have just been strange. But that's that. Uh, so then what we do is we times those numbers by the number above them, which is obviously to the power of something, and you get that. So five times a thousand is obviously five thousand, etc. And you add all this together to give you the number. That's a bit long winded, but you wait until you see the next one. Now, you might not recognize this initially, but this is binary and it's basically using an on and off thing. So, white representing zero and black representing one. Obviously, binary comes from that. That's the etymology there, meaning where the word comes from. So, let's do the same thing, shall we? Instead, I've, I haven't written the words in the top, I've written the base in the top this time just to make it, you know. I can't really think of anything to put in the top there, word-wise. Um, so you see there, like that, that's pretty simple, 2 to the power of stuff. As I explained earlier with the whole uh, put your base number in there, binary is base 2, 1 and 0, there's two numbers, and you put 2 in the top, and then you put them to the power of it. So as you can see there again, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, as with everything, and each time for this, just for the fun of it, it you double it, um, and it goes up each time, which is pretty easy to pretty easy to then figure out. So let's put that number in there, let's make it a bit more recognisable like that, and then beneath that we can put the, uh, what we did before, so we times the 1 by 1 times 1 by 4 etc, and you get that, and you add them all together to give 77 in this case. Now this one, you may have guessed it, if you did, well done, uh, same with the last one, and I guessed the one before that, um, <laughs> but obviously, uh, but this one is Roman numerals. So let's look at this number. Um, that may look interesting, but let's split it up into components here. 
and then we can split that into this. So you've got mm, m equals a thousand, and you two of them next to each other equal two thousand, of course. Uh, x is ten, and then next to it you can see ix, which means one before ten. So ten take away one is nine. That's obviously with the rest of the numbers, then you add them together like that. Now the problem with Roman numerals and why we don't use it anymore is let's say we want a number like this. What's that in Roman numerals? Well, it's this. Do you want to use that? I don't think you do. Imagine trying to say that. No, you don't want to do that. So how do we create our own number system though? What do, that's what we're here for. Okay, let's let me show you. Uh so we have a base twelve, for example. Twelve is probably one of the best bases you can get. For a few reasons I won't go into yet, however I do have a plan for the future, which I will uh, I'll probably leave out for now, uh, for, the, for that person who suggested it, thank you. Um, <laughs> you'll see, I'm, I'm very much hinting now, but base 12 is called duodecimal, and there's a list I will put in the description of the names of the number systems based on the base they have. So what are the numbers we're going to use for this? Well we can use our normal ones, but we need two more because it's base 12, you need 12 numbers. Well, we kind of have more symbols than 12 that we use in English, so let's just use A and B for now. You can make those any symbols, really. You don't even have to use the uh, normal ones that we have. But let's put that into the table like this. Again, you've got 12 as the, uh, the base there, and obviously the powers, 12 to the power of zero is one, as with everything, and that's in decimal. Um, so that's fun. This would be the number that we're going to convert. Uh, we're going to do that pretty simply. We're going to chat, just times the numbers by the one above, like before. So 3 times 1728 is 5184. 0 times 144 is obviously 0. Uh, the next one, A times 12. Well, as we've established with the numbers above, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and A will be 10. So A is 10. 10 times 12 is 120, and then 1 times 8, and that's the number we had in decimal. So 5,312 is 30A8 in duodecimal. So how do we create the numbers, though? If you've skipped to this place from the timestamp before, you've missed some cool math stuff, I suggest you go back and look, because it's some cool stuff you might want to have in your con line. But uh, let's go on to actually how to create them. Uh, firstly, we have letter-based systems, like ancient Greek, they used their letters, I mean, I don't really know the Greek alphabet, so I can't tell you much about it, but on the right-hand side is what I found, uh, if I'm wrong about that, someone please tell me, uh, it's been a bit embarrassing, but it's what I found, don't blame me, blame Google. Anyway, so they assign a number to each letter, and they add them together, just like Roman numerals would work, kind of, but more simple in that in that tense if you look at it um, and they're often in older systems like obviously ancient Greek and Roman numerals they're quite old so we've gone through letter based what about non letter based well you may recognize these what if I show you this image here you can see the number of angles in each number represents the number so one angle in one two angles in two etc etc and zero angles in zero it's a circle that's the story going around, but there's no evidence to show that that is true. Um, however, it is an interesting concept, so I wouldn't throw it away. If you were going to create one, that is what I would suggest. This is where the uh, Roman numerals actually came from. They just came from different numbers as the letters work. But that would be an interesting concept if you used something like that. It would sort of be like a featural number system. Something you might recognise, however, is this. The tally system. These originally started as just marking one for each, but then they added the uh, line through the center to group them into groups of five, which made it a lot easier to count. Try counting a hundred separate lines as opposed to 20 groups of five. Which do you think would be easier? Boo, bet you didn't expect that. Bet you didn't expect this either. Homework. This week, research different number systems. Choose a type base or create your own type of number system and create your own numbers. Pretty simple, pretty fun. Uh, yeah, see you next video.